Good morning, everyone. It is April 2nd. We are day two in this added on 30 day quarantine that we are experiencing together. The way I see it, we're in a universal timeout. And I truly believe in the end, when the dust settles, a lot of good's going to come out of it. So I committed to getting online and uh, um, giving you some thoughts each day. And so that's what I'm doing. I attempted to do this on Facebook Live yesterday and again today. And for whatever reason, I don't know if my internet isn't working correctly. It, it didn't work. And so those of you who joined me earlier, I think it cut off early and I apologize for that. So here I am. I'm going to jump on. I'm going to do this video for you on Zoom and then I will um, upload it to Facebook. And if any of you guys want to jump on these Zoom calls with me, I'm going to put the number in the video notes today because that way we could interact with one another just as easy, probably not easier than on Facebook Live. I'm not having any luck with it right now. So please feel free to join me for that. My whole reason for jumping on here every day for the next 30 days is to keep that commitment to myself. Even if no one really has much interaction with me, I'm going to do this because it's a promise I made to myself. And so what our focus is as this little community starts to gather together is I want us to decide what's the one thing you want to accomplish during these 30 days. We've been given this great opportunity to be in a little bit of a timeout and it allows us to reflect and refocus our lives a bit because I guarantee to you, none of us will be the same person walking out of this storm as we were walking into it. And um, like I said earlier, I don't think that's such a bad thing. So what's the one thing you want to accomplish over the next 30 days? Second thing is, what's your focus of the day? Now, I do this every day. I'm going to share this little kit with you. I don't know how you come up with your focus of the day. You can use what, what I use, or you can do your own, whatever it is. Just pick a focus of the day. I get mine from this Beatitudes kit. I created this a couple years ago for people to have a way to spend some quiet time each day. The kit consists of a journal. It consists of a deck of 63 cards on the back of them. There's a word, so it gives you your Beatitude of the day, and then there's a little description of it. There's also this really great smelling candle. I private labeled this with Aquies. The, the name of this scent is called Gratitude. And then there's this handy dandy little card stand that I made with Palomine. And um, you put your card in there each day. So I pulled a card for me today. And if you want to join in, I pulled it for us. And it's perfect because the card says persistent. Be persevering regardless of the challenge. What a great card for us because we are in a bit of a challenge, aren't we together? So that's what my focus is going to be today. And if you want to jump on board, please do. Let's be persistent and persevere in these challenging times that we're all going through together. The other thing that I wanted you to do is share with me the one connection you're going to make with someone each day. It could be a, a neighbor, it could be a friend, could be somebody you've lost contact with, but connect with one new person each day. And uh, there's a great idea, I thought, so I want to share this with you. Go Google virtual adopt a grandparent. These elderly folks who are sitting in nursing homes and skilled nursing facilities can't have visitors because of this lockdown that we're currently on. And so a lot of these uh, Facilities have gotten really creative and they've rigged up the ability for these folks to have FaceTime or Google time or I'm sorry zoom time with people who adopt them and I thought what a great idea. So jump on go volunteer have your kids do this too. This would be a terrific exercise for your kids. Go adopt a grandparent and jump online and talk to these folks. I'll tell you what the wisdom these folks hold and the things you can learn from them is endless and it's priceless. So I thought that was a great idea if you're running out of ideas on who to connect with, go adopt a grandparent. Perfect thing to do. And then what inspired me yesterday, I was watching the news last night and there's a group in Baltimore, I believe, and they're called Feed the Fight. And they are taking donations, monetary donations from folks. 
And in turn, what they're doing is they're going and ordering takeout meals from these restaurants in their community, and then they are delivering them to the frontline folks at the hospitals, the doctors, the nurses, the EMTs, all the folks that are there helping people um, survive through, hopefully, through this coronavirus that we're all experiencing. And so not only are they stepping up and making a contribution, they are helping some of the local restaurants stay in business. And everybody, it's, it's a real feel-good thing that they get to do together. Everybody gets to contribute to us getting through this, this horrible, faceless enemy that we're fighting right now. So I thought that was great. And if you want to look them up, feed the fight, I, they probably take donations online. If you're in a position to do that, I'm sure they would certainly appreciate that. So the other thing I want to talk with us about today, here's kind of my, my project of the day for you. I um, am putting my 21 day authenticity course online free for the next 30 days. If you want to take it, go sign up. It's on my website. I'll put it in the show notes. Meet me at the barn.com, the 21 day authenticity challenge. Go sign up for it. It'd be a great way to spend 10 or 15 minutes a day. And it would be a great way to spend some time with your family too, because there's a lot of exercises and projects that I, I invite you to do that I think would be really useful and helpful during this period of time. The one I'm going to share with you today is your values. If I ask you, what are your top three values? Could you tell me? It's likely that some of you could, and some of you might have gone through this exercise before, but it's also highly likely that many of you can't. I do some speaking around the country, and it's one of the questions I ask my audience often is, how many of you could tell me what your top three values are? More often than not, people say they can't. So what I've done is created this one page exercise for you to do and I'm going to somehow figure out how to get it in the link above. It's a PDF. You can print it out and you can go through the exercise. And when I say a value, my definition of a value is what's most important to you in life. My top three values are number one, integrity, number two, appreciation, and number three, abundance. And I use those as a GPS to help me stay focused and make good choices. If I'm getting ready to enter into a situation, whether it's a business relationship, a personal relationship of some sort, or make a decision about something, I always ask myself, in so doing this, will this align with my top three values? If the answer is yes across the board, it's probably a thumbs up, I'm gonna do it. If the answer is no, even to one of those values, if it doesn't meet or align with one of those, I usually turn them down. It's a, I take a skip on it for me. So go through this exercise. And do it with your spouse, your partner, your children, because I think there's a lot of value in knowing each other's values. And uh, you're probably going to learn something you didn't know about the people that you surround yourself with and the ones you love each day. So go do this exercise together. And the next thing I want to do, I want to read a section of my book. Many of you know I wrote a book. It's called Keep Your Ass in the Saddle. My whole reason for writing this book was to share with you some of the things that I did to redesign my life several years ago after my house burned to the ground and my 12 year relationship went up in flames and I was in a really complicated lawsuit as a founder of one of the companies I was involved in and my dad died all at the same time. So it was a, a bit of a shit show and I had the opportunity not only to want to but need to redesign how I was living my life. And I share a lot of that in the book. If you've read the book, thank you. I appreciate the support. If you haven't, get it. It's a great book. And I don't say that to impress you. I say that to impress upon you. If you are looking for some inspiration and some tips and tools on how to create a life that you love, I write about it in this book. So pick it up, give it a read, and let me know what you think. So I'm going to read this section today. <clears throat> I pause and reflect. When I was in college, I had a knee injury that made me have to quit playing sports. And up until that time in my life, my identity was really wrapped around being an athlete. And so that came to a screeching halt. And this is the pause and reflect that I'm sharing with you today that I came up with as a result of having gone through that experience. Pardon me, I'm going to put my glasses on because I can't see without them. Here we go. My knee injury and the transitions that came with it was the first time that I realized that life events like this create a fork in the road. We get to choose what path we are going to take as we go forward. Up until this point, I hadn't spent much time thinking specifically about what I wanted to do with my life. I knew that studying business was a pragmatic choice and a stable foundation on which to build a reasonable future. 
I had visions of having my own company one day, and I knew for sure that I did not want to be poor. As I look back on this time in my life, I was making it up as I went. I had no plan, I had no guidance, I had no idea. What I knew for sure was that I had to keep moving forward. Stepping into the days ahead with naivete was part of the process of becoming. It is times like this when we discover, develop, and deepen who we are. It gives us the chance to embrace the impermanence of our identity because it can and will change. It provides us with the occasion to adjust and adapt and grow. It is an invitation to give ourselves some grace. Life is dynamic and our biggest challenge and opportunities lie in finding harmony in the movement and perceived chaos that comes our way. What have been some of the forks in the road that you have encountered in your life's journey? Would you handle them the same way today as you did then? What did you learn about yourself and others in these situations that provide you with valuable tools as you evolve in your life? It is what we gain from these occurrences that becomes the wind beneath our wings as we walk through each day. The remarkable thing about life is that we get to change and adapt and grow. And it is often the most perplexing, painful, and confusing events that render the ultimate prospects for advancement. And I think that is exactly what we're in right now. We have this enormous opportunity to walk out of this coronavirus situation with renewed spirit and renewed vision and a commitment to really live life fully so that you thrive. So I wanted to share that with you today. And then lastly each day, I want to say that I think it's really important during these times for yourself and for especially for yourself and your kids is to stay in a reasonable routine. Still get up at the same time you would be getting up if you were doing the things that you were doing two or three weeks ago. Make your bed. Ladies, put your makeup on. Men, shave. If you're growing a beard because of this, groom your beard. Get dressed. Make a nice breakfast for yourself. Go through and create a routine that allows you to remain productive. It allows you to remain focused in your life. And I think humor is important, and I certainly appreciate humor in these situations. And I saw on the internet yesterday, somebody was talking about all the day drinking that's going on. And boy, I'll tell you what, I've only been shopping a couple times during this last couple of weeks. Each time has been quite pleasant, to be honest with you. But um, the paper shelves are empty, and so are the alcohol. The liquor shelves have been very empty. And so I don't know what that says about us, but I think it's not a bad thing to have a drink or have a little alcohol now and then, but I don't want us to get into bad habits during this period of time. Let's take these 30 days to forge good habits. Let's take these 30 days to create things and routines and rituals that we do that will serve us to evolve to our best selves, okay? So make sure you do that. And I think, quite frankly, make your kids get up at the same time they would have to to go to school. And this is a beautiful opportunity for you to teach them how to cook and clean and how to create a budget for themselves and how to do the laundry. Give them some responsibility because in a few short years, they're going to be out in the world on their own and you want to have them well suited to go out there and manage yourself through adult life. All right, so that's it. I want you to put in the comments or if you're not comfortable with it, direct message me. What's the one thing you want to accomplish during these 30 days and how can I help you with that? What's your focus of the day? Who are you going to connect with? And at the end of the day, reflect on what inspired you. And I'll see you again tomorrow for day three of our opportunity. By the way, any of you guys out there who are mus musicians or creative sorts, come up with some, uh, some like little morning gathering music for me that we can play to start and end our little program here. I would like that. Give me an opportunity to do something for me, okay? All right, you guys, have a kick-ass day. I will talk to you again tomorrow. And I am out. Take care. Bye.